my God! Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, calm. everyone? What's the procedure? Stay calm! How's it going, everybody? Too spooky here. And my God, the Mad Lads actually did it. Mortal Kombat 11 is coming on April 23rd, and I couldn't be more excited. Funny enough, I actually had this video planned before the trailer was dropped, so the timing is just incredible. But in this video today, we're going to be counting down 25 facts about none other than Noob Saibot. This video was suggested by these lovely people right here, and thus far, this is probably my most requested Mortal Kombat video to date. So thank you so very much to those of you who suggested this one, and I really do hope that you enjoy. Without further ado, let's teleport SLAM right into it. Number 1. Noob Saibot first appeared as a secret, unplayable fighter in Mortal Kombat 2, similar to Reptile in the first game, being introduced as a secret fight alongside Jade and Smoke in the second. Noob was an all-black palette swap of Sub-Zero, and had access to Scorpion's spear just like Smoke. In all honesty, compared to the other secret characters, Noob wasn't actually that hard to fight, as all you needed to do was win 50 matches in two-player mode. Huh? Now that I say that, it might not have been too easy of a task back in the arcade days, but these days you can just hook up a second controller and defeat yourself 50 times for a chance to fight him. Although on the Sega Genesis port of the game, it was updated to only require 25 wins, and therefore being even easier. But regardless, that was Noob Saibot's introduction in Mortal Kombat. Number 2 now, to retcon that first fact, Mortal Kombat 2 was technically not his first introduction. This was confirmed much later in the Mortal Kombat lore, specifically during Mortal Kombat Deception, but as it turns out, Noob Saibot is actually the original Sub-Zero, who was killed by Scorpion during the first Mortal Kombat. His name was Bihan, and he was the elder of the two Sub-Zero brothers. I'm sure most of you hardcore fans are pretty familiar with this lore, but just to quickly fill in the less informed people, let's talk about how Sub-Zero ended up as Noob Saibot. After being killed by Scorpion after the first tournament, his soul descended deep into the Netherrealm where he became reborn as a Revenant, similar to Scorpion. In the new timeline, Quan Chi was the one behind Noob's rebirth, but in the original timeline, it was never specified that Quan Chi was the one responsible for reviving Noob. However, in the original timeline, Noob was still allied with the Brotherhood of the Shadow, so it's still very likely that Quan Chi was responsible, it was just never stated. But regardless, the moral of this fact is that Noob is the original Sub-Zero, Bihan. Which is also interesting to me, because this could have possibly been hinted at during his first appearance as Noob in Mortal Kombat 2, as he was a palette swap of Sub-Zero after all. Although the developers also made a major flaw in not giving Noob Sub-Zero's ice powers, but but instead giving him Scorpion's Spear. It just kind of feels like a missed opportunity if it was supposed to be foreshadowed this whole time. Number 3 Noob appeared as a secret, unplayable fighter once again in Mortal Kombat 3. However, this time around, because there were no ninja present in the game, he was just a black palette swap of Kano, and therefore had access to all of Kano's moves, but faster than normal. To fight him, you needed to enter the combat code 769-342, which would transfer the winner of the match to Noob's exclusive stage for a battle. Number 4 in Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Noob appears once again with the same fight requirements as the regular Mortal Kombat 3, except this time around he appears as an actual black ninja sprite instead of just black Kano. However, Noob still has Kano's moves, they are just instead rendered to work with the ninja palette swaps instead of exclusively Kano. When it comes to the Super Nintendo and Genesis ports of the game, Noob is reworked as a playable character from the start, giving us his first actual playable appearance as Noob Saibot. Noob was also given his own original super moves, such as the teleporting slam, that he would later become known for in later games. However, he was not given his own fatality until Mortal Kombat Trilogy. Number 5 In Mortal Kombat 4, Noob made it into the game as an unlockable character in the console ports. He was originally going to be a playable character in the game from the start, but was scrapped in favor of Raiko, who was actually created by tweaking Noob's design. Noob then became an unlockable character by completing the game with Raiko, likely in reference to how Raiko was created. Instead of having his own moveset, Noob instead just borrowed moves from various characters. However, he does get a unique scythe as his weapon. Number 6 
In Mortal Kombat Tournament Edition, which if you've never even heard of that, it was basically Deadly Alliance for the Game Boy Advance. Anyways, in that game it was possible to unlock Noob Saibot by beating the arcade mode and tag team mode with every single character on normal difficulty. And if that already wasn't enough, you then had to beat the arcade mode on hard difficulty using Reaper Scorpion. In the game, Noob was basically just a black reskin of Scorpion similar to Mortal Kombat 2, but to be fair, this was also before his true origins were revealed, so it makes sense that the developers didn't reskin him as Sub-Zero instead. Number 7 when Mortal Kombat was rebooted with Mortal Kombat 9 back in 2011, this would be the final time Noob was featured as a secret character, although he was also playable within the game's main roster. To fight with the secret Noob, you first had to be on the Cathedral stage during the arcade mode. Now in the background, you have a chance to see Noob Saibot just chillin' next to the altar on the right. He appears randomly, so it's not guaranteed if he'll be there or not. However, if you do see him there, you simply need to win the match match without blocking, which will allow you to fight a classic skinned noob Saibot. Mechanic wise he's stronger than your average character, and only has access to the portal slam super move, which he tends to use quite a bit. Like I said, this also marks Noob's last secret appearance, and in general, Mortal Kombat 9 also marked his final appearance period, as he didn't appear in Mortal Kombat X. And with Mortal Kombat 11 being announced only a week ago, it's too soon to tell if he'll be included in the game or not. Number 8 in 1997 Mortal Kombat Mythologies, Sub-Zero was released, which was not only the last 2D Mortal Kombat game before they went full 3D, but this also marked the first game to feature Bihan as Sub-Zero since the first Mortal Kombat game, and he wouldn't be shown as Sub-Zero again until the franchise was rebooted in 2011. The game took place before the first Mortal Kombat game, and also introduced the relationship between Sub-Zero and Scorpion, the introduction of characters like Quan Chi and Shinnok, and also gave us an idea of what Biham was like before he became Noob Saibot. The events that took place in Mythologies were also hinted at a few times throughout the story of Mortal Kombat 9, so it's also assumed most of the events from Mythologies carried over into the reboot. Number 9 when it comes to why exactly he's named Noob Saibot, there isn't exactly any specific reason within the lore of his rebirth. However, the name Noob Saibot is actually just a mixture of Boon and Tobias backwards, which comes from Ed Boon and John Tobias respectively, whom are the creators of the game. There was also a rumor going around that Noob Saibot's name was shortened to just Noob after John Tobias left the company, as his health bar usually only showed Noob without Saibot in the later games, even going as far to introduce Noob Smoke to possibly cover up this removal. However, this rumor has been completely disproven and and Noob still goes by his full name. Number 10. Speaking of Noob Smoke, the reason Noob was paired up with Smoke in Deception is because Noob apparently found Smoke's deactivated body within Shao Kahn's fortress, after Shao Kahn's death by the Deadly Alliance. He then proceeded to reactivate Smoke's body after reprogramming him to follow Noob's every order. Noob then made plans to create his own cyber army of assassins using Smoke's mechanical body as a general example. However, in general, many fans weren't too happy with this pairing, as they felt it removed in individuality from the already underdeveloped duo. However, I personally would argue it actually gave them more development, as this was also the game we learned of Noob's previous identity. They were then separated in Armageddon due to the fact that every character needed to be present but by themselves. However, Smoke was still loyal to Noob during the events of that game. Number 11. A possible reference, or maybe even a glitch, involving Noob and Smoke can be found in Mortal Kombat 9. A compatibility pack was released that contained Mortal Kombat 2 skins of Noob and Smoke respectively. However, if you select the second color variation of Noob's classic costume, whenever he spawns his clone for attacks or fatalities, his clone is actually Human Smoke. So whether or not this was intentional is unknown, but more than likely this is just a little nod to Noob Smoke of the past. Number 12 Back in 2011 with the release of Mortal Kombat 9, Ed Boon replied to a fan on Twitter who asked why there are two noobs, to which Ed Boon revealed that noob is the character, while Cybot is the shadow clone. Hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. A thousand years of death! Noob Cybot wins.
Number 13. When Noob was first created, he wasn't given much of a backstory, so it's assumed that the creators originally didn't plan to make him Sub-Zero's older brother from the start, but rather just a demonic entity from the Nether Realm. However, when it comes to what exactly Noob Saibot is, he's considered a Wraith, which is basically the same concept as a regular Revenant, except for some reason a Wraith takes on its own characteristics making it stand out from the rest. Other examples of a Wraith would be Scorpion and Sindel, while individuals like Smoke and Kung Lao in Mortal Kombat X are considered regular revenants. Number 14. Similar to what happened with Reptile, Noob Saibot also originally had red blood in the early games, but in Mortal Kombat Deception onwards, Noob has been shown bleeding exclusively black blood. Number 15. In 2001, Midway released a third-person shooter game called The Grid, which ended up being Midway's last arcade release, period, if that says anything about the game. But in this game, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, and Noob Saibot were featured in it. Like some of the previous Mortal Kombat installments, Noob Saibot was just a black reskin of Scorpion rather than Sub-Zero. Number 16. If you look closely at Noob's stance in Mortal Kombat 9, you might notice that it's the same stance as Sub-Zero from Mortal Kombat 2, which is not only a reference to Noob's appearance in Mortal Kombat 2, but also a reference to him being the original Sub-Zero. Number 17. Noob was featured in the live-action Mortal Kombat Conquest, with an extreme fetish for BDSM. Number 18. Noob was also featured in the second Mortal Kombat movie, but only briefly, as Ermac literally secreted him from his chest. And then he just kind of fought and disappeared. Not much to see here, folks. Number 19. When designing Noob Saibot for Mortal Kombat Deception, Steve Baron was the one who took on the task. He attempted to bring a new style to Noob as a whole by venturing away from the all-black appearance. One of the early designs apparently involved Noob appearing as though he was wearing a tuxedo, while a different design that we actually got to see involved Noob wearing a hood with a red, black, and blue outfit. Due to the unique design that Steve came up with, it ended up being given to Havoc as an alternate costume. It's currently unknown if Havoc was already a character at the time, but if he wasn't, it could very well be possible that Havoc was designed around this design for Noob Saibot in general. So we just might have Noob to thank for Havoc's existence. Number 20. In Mortal Kombat 2, when losing to Noob Saibot, the announcer will say, feel the power of, before getting cut off with Toasty, instead of saying Noob's actual name. Feel the power of Toasty! In addition to that, when losing to Noob in Mortal Kombat 3, Shao Kahn will say, it's official, you suck. It's official, you suck which is actually a reference to the term noob, which is generally given to new and unexperienced players in basically any video game. Shut up, noob. Number 21. A little something that doesn't make sense would be when Quan Chi was showing Scorpion a ruse where Sub-Zero killed his whole family in Mortal Kombat 9. The interesting thing to note is that the Sub-Zero in the flashback was the younger Sub-Zero, at least in terms of the outfit. So even if the massacre actually happened, which it didn't, you could clearly see that Bihan wasn't even responsible due to his outfit, but I guess outfits are just a minor detail in a family massacre. Number 22. Despite having been Noob Saibot since the second game, Noob wouldn't receive an official ending of any kind until Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 and Mortal Kombat Trilogy. Of course, if we don't count his ending in the first game as Sub-Zero. Number 23. Speaking of endings, considering at one point Armageddon was the end of the series, in Noob's Armageddon ending, he was confronted in a dark arena by his former self as Sub-Zero who came to reclaim the body and consciousness of his former life. The two of them then fought endlessly, as they were very evenly matched. However, eventually when the battle ended, whomever emerged from the shadows was no longer Noob or Sub-Zero. Instead, it was someone new. And his name is John C. Number 24. 
For the final fact involving endings, back in Mortal Kombat 1 for his ending as Sub-Zero, it was revealed that the bounty on Shang Tsung's head was so large that when Sub-Zero successfully killed Shang Tsung during his ending, he was able to completely retire from the Lin Kuei. Which, from what we learned about the Lin Kuei's ruthless tactics later on, that must have been a fuck ton of cash if Sub-Zero was just able to walk away from the Lin Kuei as a free man. Now the moment that you've all been waiting for, number 25. One of the biggest questions on everyone's mind is whether or not Noob is actually dead, and to further expand on that, if he will be returning for Mortal Kombat 11 with its recent announcement. While I don't exactly have the answer, I felt it would be interesting if we took a second to look at the possibilities. First, we need to travel back to the story in Mortal Kombat 9, where Nightwolf kicked Noob into the Soul Nado that Noob created. In general, any character thrown into a Soul Nado would be ripped to shreds by the souls contained within it. So, by that logic, he should be dead. However, we've also seen that there are ways to escape this. As in Deadly Alliance, Scorpion was thrown into a Soul Nado and was almost killed, but was subsequently saved by the Elder Gods and then later became the champion of the Elder Gods. So with that in mind, I think it's safe to say that Noob could very well be dead and will not return. Or because this is Mortal Kombat and characters can basically come back whenever, Noob could very well make an appearance in the next game. Whether he returns as as the Elder God's champion similar to Scorpion, or by some other means, it's also hard to ignore his recent surge in popularity. So, if I'm a betting man, I'd be willing to bet that New will return in Mortal Kombat 11, and if not on the main roster, he will then return via the DLC. Of course, this is only a prediction, but to make the chances even greater, be sure to drop the absolute fattest like you possibly can on this video, because maybe, just maybe, the Elder Gods will be looking down on us and make it happen regardless. Don't let us down, boys. But, there you have it everybody, 25 facts about Noob Cybot. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and hopefully you learned something new. If you did, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next Mortal Kombat related video. On that note, be sure to comment which character you would like to learn about next. Also, special thanks to Resetta for helping me with that little RuneScape segment. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter to keep up with the channel. And we've also got some limited time Christmas sweaters available until January 1st, so be sure to snag one of those before it's too late. And if you cannot get enough Mortal Kombat content, be sure to click here for the previous fact video about Noob's former partner, Smoke. Or click here for 25 facts about Reptile. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all soon with a new video. It's official. You suck.